Thought leader ads are one of the most underrated tactics to grow on LinkedIn. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly what they are. I'm gonna show you how to build a campaign for them. And I'm gonna show you five example ads that you can run in your ad account that will generate you qualified leads. Firstly, to kick it off, what is a thought leader ad? Now on the screen, we have two types of ads. Now on the left-hand side, we have a thought leader ad. And on the right-hand side, we have a normal company ad. The main difference, obviously, is the fact that the thought leader ad is coming from a personal profile, which is Steven. On the right hand side, it's coming from the company brand name, which is Cognizant. The advantages of an ad coming from Steven's profile is that it doesn't look like an ad. It almost looks like it's a natural post. And that's exactly what a thought leader ad does. It basically blends in with the feed. And as a result, you get higher engagement rates and therefore higher click through rates. So for example, you might get a six, a 7% click through rate on a thought leader ad versus a 0.5% to a 1% click through rate on a normal company ad. There's a very, very big difference here. On the left, Left-hand side, we can also see that there's a bunch of likes and comments on this post. This is because when you run a thought leader ad, you actually boost the organic post from when it first originally started. So you imagine Steven's written a post, he's posted it, maybe it got 70 likes, maybe he got 10 comments. He's then gone into the ad account and clicked a few buttons to then boost this post with its original engagement intact. Again, you can't do this on a company ad, which means it starts off with lower social proof, which obviously can reduce its engagement rates. And finally, a thought leader ad, this is a really cool technique, but you can actually edit the organic post and you can add outbound links and call to actions inside that post body. On a normal company ad, you have the normal button which says hey click here to get the resource on a thought leader ad you don't have that button so that's what it's making up for by letting you edit and organically shift that link in. and I'm going to show you a few examples of that as well so now you understand the difference between a thought leader ad and a company ad I'm going to show you how we can set them up in the ad account right now so the very first thing you've got to do is create a campaign group in the LinkedIn ads campaign manager so you can either choose awareness or engagement these are the two types of group objectives that are useful for thought leader ads I typically like going with engagement it just generally generates better clicks into your website and then you need to give it a name so let's say it's you know test one two three for the sake of this and then you click create now after you've created the campaign group you will then create a campaign inside the campaign group we're going to click classic over here and then you're going to build a classic campaign inside linkedin ads manager so we're going to click classic over here next we're going to click next again and this is where you build your campaign that will house your ads so for now i'm not going to adjust any targeting we'll do that for a separate video but the two ad formats that you care about are single single image and video. So if you choose one of those, you then click next again and click save. And now you can start to add ads to this campaign. So first you've got to click on browse existing content and you can literally type in any URL of a post or you can click on a employee of your company or anyone that you've requested ads from. And then you can click one of these posts to essentially request approval to run this as an ad. So once we click request approval, this post went pre viral Paolo. We can then see the request and all that needs to happen is Paolo on his account needs to view that request and accept it. And I'll show you how that works again. So all you've got to do is click view request and you can click copy request link. Now I'm inside Paolo's account. What it looks like is you have this link which says you've been requested. You can click approve. But what I also like to do is click auto approval on, which means anytime I want to add future ads from Paolo's account, Account, it will auto approve as well. Now, if I go back to the campaigns manager, it then, if I hard refresh this for a second, should come up with the fact that it's been approved. Now, if I hard refresh, if I go back to the posts that I have over here under request, it's been approved. I can click it. Now, all I've got to do is scroll down and click launch campaign. Now, you've just seen me launch a thought leader ad campaign in under two minutes. Granted, I didn't do any targeting. I didn't remove the LinkedIn audience network. I didn't do any manual bidding. But on a high level, that bit's kind of easy. The hard bit is knowing what posts you should be boosting, how they should be structured and what their objective is in the grand scheme of your content and your client getting strategy. So I'm now going to show you how your funnel works and the types of posts you should be using in your thought leader ads. So from a funnel perspective, you ultimately have two layers on LinkedIn. You have a cold layer and a warm layer. And I've just divided this into three sections. On your cold layer, you are effectively doing three things. You're targeting well, you're doing a certain post type and you have a goal in mind. So generally speaking, your goal on the cold layer is basically to filter for a qualified audience. You're running ads in order to get a qualified person to click. We're not really trying to get a conversion on that first go. Instead, we're trying to actually build a retargeting audience or make sure that this person knows we exist. So to do this, we generally use targeting options such as the native ones on LinkedIn, or we will upload a list. So for example, if you sell into SaaS companies, so for example, if you're selling into SaaS or maybe you're selling into e-commerce, you 100% need to be uploading lists 
next to your LinkedIn ads manager. Otherwise, you will not have a reliable way to make sure the people you're spending money on are actually a qualified ICP. Now, once you have that uploaded list, we're really just trying to run two types of content pieces, which are maybe lead magnets and cases. I'm going to show you some examples of those. Later on, when you get to the warm funnel, and again, I'll show you some examples of these, the whole objective is you're targeting people that have engaged with your cold ads, or they watched a percentage of your video, or they visited your website. And at this point, we're giving them proof content. We're showing them case studies, customer testimonials, process breakdowns, direct offers. And the whole point is we've actually built a little bit of awareness with them. We now need to build trust so that we can convert them into meetings. So very clearly, I want you to separate your campaigns in your head. Like you have your cold layer to get attention and your warm layer to convert attention. Now let's get into the types of ads that you can run. I've got five examples here. I'm going to show you each one because they all have different points that you can pick up on in your thought leader ad strategy. The first one was by Erica and she runs a business called How Solo Scale and she helps solo consultants. And what I really like about this post is that it's almost a pain highlight. She opens the post with the stupidest way to run your solo business is to rely 100% on referrals. And what I love about this is because it's done with an ad in mind because it ultimately is filtering for the exact ideal customer and pain point in the hook. So if you open that hook and you click see more and you read the rest of the post, you're effectively saying, I have a solo business and I have referrals. That is basically the main qualifiers for her business. She then goes to agitate the pain in the post. So she says, for example, I just spoke with another solo making 40K a month. Now another solo making 40K dollars a month is both the ideal customer she's targeting, but maybe potentially their dream state as well. She's scared about what happens if a major client leaves and then the referral pipeline runs dry at the same time. She then goes into three bullets when doing great work becomes your great entire strategy, constantly reinventing custom deliverables and being excellent at what you do by having zero recognition. So this is the agitation of the pain. She's like showing that she understands that customer really, really well. And I presume that these three key pain points are exactly what that solo consultant feels. She then has almost a transitionary sentence, which is, listen, I know this is uncomfortable to hear, but this sustainable solo business is not built on people who can hustle the hardest. They're built on clear offers, etc. So she's beginning to open up this idea that there's something new that needs to happen. And then finally, she has a CTA ready to manage your risk against referral dependency DM me. Now this is her CTA. She's not linking out anywhere, although maybe she potentially could, but this is a great post, which does essentially that it highlights the pain, makes them feel seen. It gives the tease of a solution, but nothing more than that. And then has a call to action. This is a great place for your ad to be on a cold layer. The second post that works really well is by Nick and he's done a lead magnet. So Nick runs a fractional COO business for agency owners above 100K MRR. And so he opens with, I've acquired and sold seven marketing agencies. My secret, this one dashboard that currently runs over $50 million through it. Get it free today. So this is a lead magnet post. And we know that because at the end of the post, he says, connect with me, like this post, and I'll DM, DM it over. So the point of this is one, he's filtering for marketing agencies by saying marketing agencies in the hook. But two, he's giving something away for free. So if a marketing agency comes across this, they like it and they want it, they have to essentially de-anonymize themselves by adding a comment into the posts over here, which you can't see. Now, as a result of doing that, he effectively gets to know exactly who is interested in the lead magnet and he gets to see them on LinkedIn. So then he can go and DM them forward and have a conversation. Now, unlike uh, Erica over here, he didn't necessarily call out a specific pain point, but he called out a dream state, which is acquiring and selling agencies, running 50 million through it, the dashboard, which ultimately solves a pain of not being able to understand the business. But later on in the post, he does go into reference specific pain points, which again, makes him feel and makes the audience feel like they're being heard by him. Now, this is a really good post because ultimately it gets a lot of reach organically. And so when he's going to boost it as a lead magnet, it's coming with a load of social proof in there. So again, this is a really good post to run on your cold layer to identify people that are, you know, of the right ICP and that are qualified. He doesn't necessarily need to call out a 100K MRR in the hook itself because he can do that in the targeting. He can only speak to, for example, agency owners above 50 employees, which probably would be at least 100K MRR every single month. The third post that worked really well, and I, I think this is awesome, is by a guy called Nick. Um, and he runs a company called Stacked Commerce. I don't actually know completely what they do, but he basically says the US consumer needs European and Australian brands. Why? And he goes on to explain that the foods, beverages, and soaps are filled with toxic chemicals. Americans are waking up to this. And if you're an international brand, the time is now to take advantage of the one of the biggest market boys in the United States. And then he's got a video there. There is no call to action. There is no attempt to make someone buy anything. So this is very clearly a cold layer ad, but this is clearly awareness. This is clearly education. He's basically telling people, hey, become aware that there is an opportunity for you to make money in the United States. So it's an opportunity ad. He gives an education about why. So it's very logical over here, this sentence. I don't know how true it is. I'm sure it's bad in the US, but it's a very good logical question and argument. He then educates in this new opportunity and he has 
this video and I really like the video here because people should know that LinkedIn allows you to retarget video watches. So if someone saw this ad and they clicked on it and I could be like, okay, look, they engage with the ad, but they could have just scrolled away. But what you get to do if you have the video is you can say, hey, if someone's watched 50% of the video, which is a minute 50 in this case, you can then retarget them separately. And that person obviously has much higher intent. They obviously know what the opportunity is over here. And so they make for a much better qualified audience to go after. So if you are running ads, it's very, very useful to have a video in there because it unlocks this second available asset, which is retargeting based on the amount of time they've watched the video for. And again, the longer your ad and there's more you can put up that percentage watch, the higher intent audience you begin to build. The fourth post that works really well, and I think everyone needs to be doing this at some point in their retargeting layer is the direct offer. Josh Cialy, if I pronounce your name right, I don't know. He works at a company called Recruit, which does really awesome ads, I think. And ultimately he adds uh, an opportunity for freelancers to get placed into businesses with South African talent. And so what he says here over here is need SEO support from 17, 17 pounds, 23 pounds an hour. He explains this person and there's a video snippet of Mubu sharing how he helped a US client rank websites. So the snippet video allows for in-feed consumption. Again, we can retarget video watches. There's a clear link out because I can look at his profile, which makes a lot of sense. It doesn't look like an ad at all. And it's got a very clear offer and outcome in the hook. This is probably one of the best thought leader ads out of all of these here because of how clear it is, how well it's communicated, how well it creates engagement signals for later down the funnel and how he's using the link out, which I didn't think any of the other guys were using. And finally, post five is the custer testimonial slash case study. And this is an example by perspective. Perspective are like a funnels agency. They think of them as like a sexy click funnels. And what they've done here is they've got a customer testimonial, not someone working at the company on their thought leader ad. So perspective run a business. And this guy called Jude doesn't work at perspective, but they've been able to ask Jude, hey, can we run an ad on your behalf the same way I requested it earlier in the video? So this is a customer testimonial. And he goes, our perspective solar funnels are converting higher than Meta's own lead forms. That's amazing. When we use lead forms back when, we were getting a 13 to 16% completion rate. With perspective, we're pushing into the low 20s. Wow, that's amazing. So there's very clear benefit. It doesn't feel salesy at all. And then he begins to make it feel really authentic by the natural things that you write in a LinkedIn post. Like you might write in all caps. I don't think you understand how strong this is. He's tying in his personal story. The fact, the phrase of you created a monster and all that's left is to unleash it. It just feels real. And that makes it so much more higher performative on the feed. And I like this part over here, which has a real screenshot, real proof of the insider tool. And that's a very, very useful thing to do in any ad. If you can add proof in any of your content, you will automatically improve that content 10x fold. By the way, if you want this full mirror board with all the ad examples that I'm about to show you with how to set up LinkedIn Thought Leader ads, you can check out the link in the description below. So as you've probably realized, the most important part in the LinkedIn LinkedIn thought leader rad journey is making sure you have an awesome organic post to promote. And so in the next video, I'm going to show you how to write amazing LinkedIn posts so that you can get leads in the feed and they can come inbound to you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.